I have just come off of a very great series where I've been talking about personal branding. And guess what? It has refused to go away. And today, I am going to start another mini-series on the same, but this time around, I'm going to focus on God. I'm going to be talking about the eight reasons why God's personal brand sucks. And I know that God is a very divisive figure. Every time you talk about God, there are some people who will talk about freedom of worship, some people will talk about indoctrination and, and all those things. And others will talk about those people who believe in God, don't think, they don't have a mind of their own, and so on and so forth. And those are actually reasons as to why God's personal brand is in jeopardy or it sucks. By the way, even as I'm speaking, when I talk about God's personal brand sucks, people around the world will raise their eyebrows and will be thinking, why in the world is that guy demeaning God? So I want us to discuss all those things in the next eight episodes or so. You got to stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. News in Kenya, as I am recording this today, they have it that there is this famous bishop who has a famous congregation in the heart of Nairobi. And this bishop was once a member of parliament or a senator and so on and so forth. And this bishop has been admitted in the ICU, guess what, suffering from COVID-19. And questions are going all over the place. Actually, there are guys who don't believe in God. They're basically throwing barbs and throwing memes around and saying that, you know, in fact, there's a headline in one of these, one of these uh, local stations, local TV stations that screamed positive after prayers. And so you, you get my point that God's personal brand has gone through mud over the years and it's been soiled and so on and i want us to dissect because we're going to learn a lot about branding we're going to learn a lot about influence we're going to learn about purpose and so on and so forth in these several episodes in the mini series that we're doing about god's brand sucking there's a difference between a personal brand and an influence see a personal brand although controlled by you is subject to interpretation and also misinterpretation by other people, especially to the degree that they perceive your impact on other people. And that involves God. I mean, everyone determines in their hearts and in their minds that God is all-powerful and God should be able to solve all these things. Why is it that churches are being closed when COVID-19 is coming and God is powerful? Why can't God just wave a magic wand and every one of these diseases, including AIDS and malaria and smallpox and all these poxes, why can't he just wave a magic wand and all these things are rubbed off of the planet? Why can't he wave a magic wand and all these things, including poverty and wars and pestilences and hurricanes and floods and all these things, mudslides, why can't God just wave a magic wand and those things stop? 
God's personal brand is at stake. Of course, it is folly to compare God's brand to our own, to our own levels and to our own terms. But I think it is subject, it's a subject worth exploring. A subject that promises great lessons and great in- intrigue. And that's what I want us to discuss in this episode. So forget about the intricate systems that God has designed in the human body. I don't even want to go there. I mean, if you just look at the eye, there is no optical device on the face of the earth that has been designed that is as intricate, sensitive, powerful as the eye. <laughs> Let me not even go there. I've not even talked about the brain. I've not even talked about the nervous system. I'm not even talking about the, the DNA that if they unfolded your DNA, it can wrap around the world for one human being. And that's God in play, my friends. That's God putting things together. See, let's talk about space. I, I watched a video yesterday <laughs> about space and I put it on my timeline. It is a mind-boggling. It is estimated, for example, if you talk about our, our, our Milky Way, the galaxy where we are part of, it is estimated that there are more than a hundred to 400 billion stars in the Milky Way. I'm talking about stars. And now, there are other, listen to this, there are other billion galaxies in space. Think about that for one second. I'm not talking about the Earth itself. The Earth is part of the solar system, which is part of four, I mean, seven planets. And it's part of the Milky Way. This Milky Way has 400 billion stars. The Milky Way alone. But wait for a minute. Just wait a minute. The Milky Way is one of over other billions of galaxies. You think about that for a minute. The mind cannot even wrap itself around that possibility. And it's proven by science. It is true. A closer look at our own solar system, yeah, where we live, it will help us a bit. Each object in the solar system revolves around an orbit. And let's just focus on the moon and the earth and the sun. Just those three things. So minute, so mundane in the whole tapestry of the whole universe in space. Listen, the moon revolves around the earth for 29 days. It also revolves around its own. I mean, it it revolves around on its own for the same number of days. And that is why we only see one of its faces. We don't see the whole thing. The earth, listen, revolves around the sun 365 days or so. Oblivious of what the moon is doing. Are are you getting this? (laughs) So this, ladies and gentlemen, can never be chance. This can never be Big Bang. This is God's own masterpiece. This is God's own brand. And so, (laughs) a few years back, I came across a list by Time magazine dubbed the 100 most significant figures in history. And you'll be excited that Jesus Christ came out first in that list. Not that he is that insecure and needs man's approval in terms of his personal brand. God is on his own level just by himself in terms of his personal brand. Yet God cares so much about his reputation, his brand. Over and over again in the Bible, this, this phrase, for the sake of my name. It is repeated over and over again. No no doubt, God's influence on earth is basically unrivaled. So a personal brand is of course made up of two things. And we've been discussing all the things. It is made up of what you are promised to do. Okay? That is what you are touting. That is the front end. The logos, the uh, mission statements, the vision statements the products and services that you have, the difference, you know, the advertisements, that is the promise of the personal brand. But then it's also made up of what you actually did, 
what the promise was fulfilled what people are saying about the promise being fulfilled so these two reasons are what cause many people to be totally disillusioned about God's personal brand and uh, if he promised that he would do this and it is written here right here he said I will not be poor how come it has not been done how come it is not true how come that bishop is in in the ICU and she is the one who's been preaching healing how come my contribution my condition still pervades how come this and that still happens in the world i mean kids being killed kids being raped i mean uh, wars and pandemics and so on and so forth how come there are so many atrocities meted out on the helpless the unborn the women and the children where is god in all this and god's personal brand is getting a rap brother god's personal brand listen to me has suffered greatly especially in the lives of individuals this means that setting aside his genius in creating those individuals let alone the space we've just talked about when it comes to the manifestation of god's personal brand the manifestation of god's personal brand in individual in individual lives there is so little to talk about to be honest if there was the advent of testimonies as we used to know them that the christian folk have been treated to for years will be the key selling point of god's personal brand you go to a church and you go to a fellowship and you hear a testimony and you'll be like no no in your heart of course you don't say it aloud no that's not god i mean that's not god listen that's not god that's so my need to attribute it to god but anyway let me not get worked up the testimonies will be the selling point of god's personal brand and they actually are supposed to be for they show the second part of that brand which is the fulfillment of the promises he said he will do he has done So when is the last time you had on a consistent basis the true testimonies of promises being fulfilled by God at individual level Huh See the statement this statement God is in control has created in my estimation more atheists than it has comforted believers I kid you not Well it might be like I am mocking God. It might sound like I'm mocking God here, but I am not. It might sound like I'm mocking believers, but I am not. It also so might sound like I am becoming a non-believer. Believe me, far from it. Far from it. And there are very many reasons as to why God's personal brand sucks. You understand what I'm saying when I talk about that? As in it's not up to what we at individual level people are confused people are actually wondering where exactly is this god and so in this episodes i'm going to start discussing what i believe are some of the reasons as to why that brand god's personal brand is attributed or perceived to be suffering and yet probably it is not it's a herculean task that i've taken and i pray that i will be able to deliver so call your friends call your loved ones tell them to stay tuned to life signatures radio until tomorrow when we get started bye bye